Yeah, it's real interesting. Uh, I'm working on a story on this for today. Uh, basically, uh, the Senate, under uh, Majority Leader McConnell, requested that they ha have the briefing in the White House, and the White House agreed to do it. And the uh, uh, actual substance of it, it's going to be classified, so it's going to be in a secure facility. But you can tell by the people that are doing the briefing uh, what it's about. And it includes uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, uh, Defense Secretary uh, James Mattis, or Jim Mattis, and uh, the DNI uh, uh, Daniel uh, Coates. And they're, they're obviously, I think what this is about is to explain uh, what took place under the Trump administration's recent policy review, where they looked at new options for mm -hmm. deal to deal with the North Korean threat. Well, it, it is really interesting. And, and I just want to play a piece of sound from the president, because it, it's always interesting to be informed on what he thinks of this. This is what Trump had to say on Monday about the threat of North Korea. The status quo in North Korea is also unacceptable, and the Council must be prepared to impose additional and stronger sanctions on North Korean nuclear and ballistic missile programs. This is a real threat to the world, whether we want to talk about it or not. North Korea is a big world problem, and it's a problem we have to finally solve. It's interesting, Bill, because yesterday on the program, I had John Batchelor on, and he raised the specter of something I had never heard before, and I'm wondering if you've heard any of this. He is saying he expects China to get very involved, but in a covert way, because they have so much at stake here. They, they, they really view the situation probably as more at risk to them than, than we do to us, in the sense of they don't want to lose that buffer between South Korea and, and, mm -hmm. and China. And, and John suggested there might be a plan in place to take out, if you will, that's my words, not his, but somehow to remove Kim Jong-un from power and replace them with a more China-friendly, more China-controlled individual. Uh, is that a scenario you've ever heard before? And it's, it, is it, in your opinion, even doable? Uh, it is doable. Um, they had an opportunity to do this. Um, the Chinese are playing a double game on North Korea, first of all. Yeah. <clears throat> on the one hand, they're saying that they want, don't want nuclear weapons on the peninsula. But on the other hand, they're not really willing to pressure the Pyongyang regime into, into getting rid of the ones they already have and halting development of the missile delivery systems. Um, they could, uh, the Chinese are, are, are kind of in a quandary uh, we learned from the Mar-a-Lago summit between uh, Xi Jinping and Trump that uh, Xi claimed that uh, he, he couldn't do anything to stop North Korea. In other words, he claimed that he mm. didn't, they, Chinese don't control Kim Jong-un, which is not really exactly accurate. In other words, they've cut off coal shipments, but that was really symbolic. There have been recent Chinese press reports mentioning that if uh, North Korea goes ahead with another nuclear test that they could then limit oil uh, exports to North Korea, which would really have an impact. Uh, but they haven't really done what they need to do. And, and Trump has made clear that if China doesn't do it, the U.S. will. And I think that really is putting pressure on Beijing. Yeah, I would think that that would motivate them in a big way. But it's interesting because you wrote a piece recently talking about the, net, the, the network of support that has yes. allowed North Korea to have these weapons, have this weapon technology. China is integral to that happening. And in a point of fact, without getting into a really complex explanation, what you're basically underlining, Bill, is there are a lot of countries helping North Korea or enabling North Korea. Uh, two in particular, China and Russia. Right. Uh, for, first of all, North Korea has a well-developed missile, indigenous missile program. They can build their own short-range missiles, and they're working on longer range. But uh, in February of last year, they conducted a uh, missile test, and uh, the South Koreans and the U.S. were able to gather the debris from that. And inside of it was uh, Chinese components and Russian components. This was outlined in a recent United Nations uh, panel of experts report. Uh, so that, I think, is where the U.S. could put new pressure uh, on North Korea by cutting off those suppliers. That would mean secondary sanctions on Chinese or Russian companies that are linked to the North Korean nuclear missile program. Yeah, and it's interesting because, you know, just today we had, we had China warning about the rising uh, presence of U.S. military in the region, and they seem to be issuing some vague threats. Are they serious about those threats, Bill, in your estimation, or is this just posturing on their part to save face? 
Yeah, it's posturing for the most part. Yeah, uh, Trump has set back uh, eight years of Chinese efforts to achieve he hegemony over uh, <laughs> all of Asia, basically, uh, especially in the South China Sea, East China Sea, and then uh, Northeast Asia. And uh, Trump has uh, really caught them off guard and put them off balance. He's unpredictable. And for the Chinese, that is what they fear most, uh, anyone that's unpredictable. And it was, uh, I think, one of the master strokes, whether it was intended or not, for Trump was to conduct the uh, April 3rd uh, Syrian missile strike uh, right while he was meeting with the Chinese leader. It was clearly a signal.